Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. This one is out much later than usual, so apologies for that. But I'm hoping it's for good reason, because today we are finally looking at something I've talked about for ooh, at least six months, probably longer, maybe even over a year. And today I thought we'd look, with it being July the 4th, I thought we'd look at the US Army of 1812. Now I thought about doing a historical overview I thought about doing a how to start collecting, but I thought the best thing we could do before we have either of those things is have a look at the army lists. So that's what I've got today. I've written a set of rules that I think would best represent the US Army of 1812. It's, it's slightly thrown together, if I'm honest. There is definitely room for improvement. So before we go any further, I want to say if there is something that I have missed or something that you disagree with, Please, 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 please let me know in the comments down below. We can have this as a bit of a living document and we can make it in, you know, we can make the improvements as we go along. Because one of the things that I do know about the War of 1812 is that, particularly in America, it's not, well, even in America, I should say, it's not actually that well known about, but the people who do know about it are very, very passionate about it. In Europe, we know almost next to nothing about it. Maybe. The, uh, the outcome is pretty much the only thing that we know. Uh, I don't know what the uh, the Canadian view of the War of 1812 is. I don't really know, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so I thought we'd put forward some ideas. I've got a uh, start collecting or how to start collecting for the future as well. But I wanted to pin down the different units and things like that and get some rules together and see what everyone thought. So we start off with the first image. And this is just a basic blurb to introduce the army. Now, what I'm not going to do is like all those terrible PowerPoint presentations that anyone who went to any in the early 2000s will know, where the facilitator just stood at the room and read out the uh, read out the slide. So you can see what I've written there, and if you need a bit of extra time to read it, then just pause the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain some of the choices and some of the ideas as we go on. But for this first one, just take the time you need to pause it, and then we'll get on with the actual army list proper. So this is the page of the US Army Special Rules, and we start off with the first one, US Militia. Now, I'm using the Militia Rules from Clash of Eagles here, which has it's mostly for the Russians in that book, and it has a rule where every time you move, you have to roll dice. If you roll one, then you stand still and you become disordered. It's, it's, that's if you're in line. It's pretty harsh. So I've got rid of that because the US militias were actually reasonably well trained. Probably on the level of Prussian Landwehr, I would say. They'll, yeah, no, pro probably about Prussian Landwehr. Maybe halfway between them and the Prussian reservists. The second rule we've got is buck and ball. Now, I've offered two potentials here. The reason being that I think the easiest one is the same as the Austrians. They get an extra dice the first time they fire at point blank range. And, you know, it's, it's all going good, but it's just a bit boring. So I've added a variation on that, which is you still roll the three dice or two dice, however many it is, to do your closing fire. But one of them is different and it causes disorder on a five or six to represent the scatter shot, maybe taking out some of the officers or maybe making them recoil a little bit because it's unexpected, things like that. So what the, um, for those of you who don't know, Buck and Ball is, it, I've said that it actually double loaded them, but that's not actually true. They actually they had cartridges that were Buck and Ball cartridges. So you had the Buck shot at the back, so kind of like a shotgun, and then you had the musket ball at the front. I'd have thought they were the other way around, to be honest. But uh, no, they were. it was buckshot at the back and then the ball at the front. And that would operate like a musket and a shotgun at the same time. Very good at point blank range. Probably the the shotgun um, shell was... Uh, the shotgun pellets, I should say, were probably fairly useless at more than maybe 20, 30 yards, I would have thought. Now, what I was thinking of putting is that although the buckshot does cause disorder on a 5 or a 6, your opponent gets plus 1 to their morale save against that hit. I just thought it makes it too complicated in the end, but the idea there was that it, you'd be surprised how much protection clothing and things of the period actually gave soldiers. So the idea was there that the buckshot 
was less devastating than a musket ball. I cut that out for simplicity's sake, but if you want to add it back in, then that's absolutely fine. Now, the next one I've got is that they do not have to form square. So often in the War of 1812, the US Army would actually stop a British cavalry charge or attempt to stop them just by uh, firing with their fire discipline. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Obviously, they were often in rough ground anyway, so that may have had something more to do with it. That's not always necessarily explained that they were. Often they were, though. So, again, it's, it's just to make it slightly different from the European theatre. Cavalry shouldn't really be a huge part of the War of 1812 games. So, you know, you, that's one I've put in. You can either take it on board or you can ignore it. It's entirely up to you. Now, the next one is a quote. Anyone who saw the Bonamy Richard video will know from this, and it is, I have not yet begun to fight. I've actually put no yet begun to fight. There's a typo there. So, I have not yet begun to fight. Now, the idea here is anyone who's seen my video on building better brigades will know that I prefer to play that the brigade is only broken when you go under half strength. And I thought here there's a good, there's a good example of a way of putting it in the rules. Now, often in your brigades of the War of 1812, you'll be looking at three battalions to a brigade if you're going for the historical order of battle. And that obviously means that it's, it's not necessarily great for... Uh, well, I, I, actually, I say it's not great for the breakpoint. It actually means that there's no difference. If you lose one, you're at 66%, so you have to lose two to either be at or below 50% anyway. So it largely doesn't make any difference. If you've got a brigade of four units, maybe a cavalry brigade, then that would make a difference there. And the final one is Buccaneers. Now, I've used the Buccaneers special rule. This is going to cover all those sort of irregular troops that the Americans could call on in the War of 1812. So, not only Buccaneers, who were the Buccaneer from the roundabout, sort of the Bayou, Mississippi, Louisiana way, but also the sort of the wild mountain men who would be in Vermont and places like that that were attacking when the Americans tried to invade Canada. So, it, it's just, it, it's a catch-all term. Although it means something specific, I've used it for the mounted men as well, as we'll see shortly, just because it keeps everything nice and simple. I've put in the mounted men uh, unit entry, we'll, we'll see it when we get to it, that you could make further distinctions between them if you wanted to, but to, to be 100% honest, this video is late enough as it is, I didn't want to mess about with it and make it even later. So with all that done, let's get into the actual troops themselves. Now, as you can see in this next slide, this is an, a, a, a very rare photograph from the War of 1812 of a American soldier defending his, harm, his homestead against the British. <laughs> there you go. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's almost documentary proof of how the Americans fought in the War of 1812. I just thought I'd put it in there. It's a bit of a July the 4th... Um, a, a July the 4th salute to all my American listeners out there. But uh, yeah, America, that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> but seriously, let's, uh, let, let's, let's get on with looking at the army list. So the first thing is always the most exciting, not really. It's the line infantry. Now, as you'll see from here... The US line infantry are exactly the same as everyone else's line infantry. They were well-trained troops. They were officered by schooled graduates of West Point, which had been around for about 10 years at this point. So they knew what they were doing. They're, they're just, just general purpose troops. Pretty good. Same as everyone else's, really. Not as good as the British, it should be said, and they will be their theatre opponents. But I think that's fair enough. And also, I would suggest that the British are going to get a special rule on top of their regular ones because they were very, very often Peninsular War veterans. Certainly by the time the war reached 1814, they were. Below them, we've got the State Militia. Now, the State Militia are an interesting one because I've given them... I, I've, To be honest... I've probably undersold them a little bit. As I said, they were probably the equivalent of the Landveer, the Prussian Landveer. I've given them freshly raised, just to, to add a little bit frisson of excitement when they come on. Uh, they've got the Buck and Ball special we talked about. They're also sharpshooters as well. Because the idea here of the militia is they would tend to be more private civilians, their equipment, although it was often provided by the states, they would also bring their own equipment as well. We saw in the video on the Brunswick OL 
that the Jaegers there would often take their own hunting rifles and they were exceptionally good. Now, the state militia, they will operate effectively as a almost like a second-rate line battalion. Not as good. There are some significant disadvantages to the state militia, but they do have mixed formation, as do the line infantry. And it just means that they can be added into the army and just look a little bit different. One of the great things about the uh, the volunteers or the militia is they often had really cool names, named after the colonels or the people who raised them. In fact, there's even, a, I think, two battalions of coloured troops. So these were refugees from Haiti, which, of course, uh, re it, Haiti is a whole separate thing. I might actually do a video on the ha Haitian Revolution, where the Napoleon reinstigated slavery on the island of Haiti. There was a, a well, now slave revolt. And the guy who led it is absolutely fascinating. But some of the refugees from Haiti were in the southern part of America. So Florida, Mississippi, Georgia, Louisiana, all that places. And they actually formed a regiment which fought against the British at the Battle of New Orleans. So that's something different as well. But because they were all equipped by their states, certainly for uniforms, it became something of a bit of national pride. It's actually very similar to 1861. Anyone who knows about the American Civil War will know that in the the very, very early days of it, you had things called legions, which were a private individual, particularly in the Confederacy, would raise his own unit of troops, some infantry, some cavalry, some artillery, and you know he'd clothe and equip them however much he wanted to. Anyone who's read the Starbuck Chronicles by Bernard Cornwall will know, will know about the legions. So there, there, there's a lot of variety out there. I've maybe been a little bit harsh to them. Maybe they should be better than I think. Perhaps you could get rid of the freshly raised special rule. I think that would probably be fair enough. Uh, maybe leave them at that. But I like the idea that they're slightly... They're, they're better shots, but they're less reliable. You don't necessarily want them in close combat. Now, guys who you do want in close combat are our next one, and that is the Native American Warbands. Now, I, I don't want to cause any offence here. Some people refer to them as Native Americans. Some people call them Indians. They themselves often use Indian, often use Native American. It, it, it's a whole smorgasbord that I don't really want to get into here. So, if I say Native American and you prefer Indian or vice versa, I don't mean any offence by it, but it's just, you know, it's, it's just how it is. So, the... Indians at this time, they were not quite, as as I've said in the sidebar here, they weren't quite as wild, and I use that term in inverted commas, as they were during the French-Indian Wars. Anyone who's read or seen Last of the Mohicans will know what they were like there. They'd been exposed to American settlers for quite a while by this point. And as I also said, it's quite interesting. If you look, so the, um, the main tribe that fought with the Americans were the Choctaw, and there's some photographs of Choctaw tribal members, and they're wearing sort of the big feathered war bonnets that you, you know, you've seen in westerns. Now that to me is more of a Plains Indian thing, so that's more Sioux, um, Crowfoot, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not necessarily what's sometimes referred to as Woodland Indians, not the uh, the the the, the non-Plains Indians, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm desperately trying not to talk myself into trouble here. So I don't really know about that. Now, one of the things, and he is almost certainly going to be a subject of a Napoleonic Figures video. I've not done a Napoleonic Figures video in quite a while, actually. I'm definitely due on. Uh, is a guy called uh, Tecumense. He is a fascinating guy, and he uh, joined the British to fight because he was promised an Indian homeland. The British, as is our want completely reneged on that deal uh, he did not take it lying down he's a fascinating guy i can't wait to to get into him but there were tribes fighting on both sides is what i'm saying particularly on the british side but again at the battle of new orleans which is one of the more famous battles of the war of 1812 there were the choctaws did fight for the americans so the rules i've given them here i've kind of i've kind of made a bit, bit of a mashup between the rules given in rebellion which is the american war of independence supplement and also in black powder 2 
There is a scenario at the back against the Plains Indians. So I've kind of mashed those two together. But I've mostly gone for the ones from Rebellion. So you've seen I've upped their hand-to-hand -hand value. They are now hand-to-hand -hand 8 with Ferocious Charge and Terrifying Charge. So Terrifying Charge means that the opponents need to take a morale test if they're being charged. And that's to represent the Indian war cries as they charge. I'm not going to do it here. But there's some suggestion that the Confederate, uh, the Rebel Yell was taken from Choctaw Indians. So you know, it, it kind of represents that. Ferocious Charge means they get to reroll all their misses when they charge. So the British Cavalry will have that as well, and it's very familiar to them. But the idea there is that these, these Indians, the Native Americans, they are there to get stuck in. They do have some shooting. They had muskets at this time, and they were very proficient with them. Some still used bows. Bows are particularly good for bayou hunting. Again, even today, people hunt with bows in the bayou, particularly because it's damp. You don't want your gunpowder to get wet. Certainly back in the 19th century, you didn't. So bows were a lot more consistent. But smoothbore muskets, bows, yes, whatever. They've got a little bit of shooting. They've got a really fantastic hand-to-hand -hand value. And that is um, re-rollable when they charge so really really strong the idea there is you want to get those guys in combat now I've given them unreliable and marauders they do not have the US special rules that we talked about at the beginning because they are individual on their own they also I haven't written this down maybe I have done somewhere they can only be ordered by their own officers now at this time actually the Choctaw is very similar to the Indian Army uh, as part of the British Army they actually had white officers they were you know West Point graduates as the line infantry officers were and so they would be not not trained and equipped and they wouldn't fight like western style troops and again I use western in inverted commas there but they weren't the the war bands that we saw, saw earlier on say like to go back to last of the Mohicans they're not like when Magua is in charge of his um is it the Shawnee that he's using in that? I can't remember. But, uh, so they are being controlled as units by European-style off officers, but they would also be encouraged to close with the enemy, where tomahawks, knives, things like that, would definitely be the weapon of choice. I want these guys to be almost like a terror unit. These guys are the ones that you, you send in first to soften up the British. Now, if you are that way inclined... You could use these guys to use up the British's first fire, but as you can see, they only have a morale of 5+. plus. So you may actually want to hold them back, maybe send in some American troops first, they've got that better morale save, and then use the Indians to deliver the killing blow after the Americans have soaked up enough firepower and maybe caused a few hits themselves. So now we get to the fourth page of the army list here and we look at buccaneers and mountain men now jean lafitte was a famous pirate and he came to the aid of the americans at the battle of new orleans he and his crew were actually fighting again on the american side he got a pardon out of it so it was it was definitely worth doing and these guys i wanted to be skirmishers and again they've got mixed rifles particularly the, i'm thinking more of the mountain men than the buccaneers here but they are only a small unit, so they've got hand hand 4, shooting 2, stamina 2, morale 4+, plus, but they do have that elite 5+. plus. These guys are hardened, not necessarily soldiers, but they are hardened survivors. These guys, they, you can't really disorder a guy who is used to operating on his own. The officer gets killed, he's like, whatever, I only met that guy yesterday. So, so the idea there is that these guys provide a lot of flexibility for the Americans. I'm thinking of adding a special rule to them, which allows them to set traps. So maybe if they're charged, the enemy takes an automatic hit or something like that. I haven't quite decided that yet, but let me know if you think that'd be something cool down below. It's, it's a little bit silly. It's a little bit Warhammer, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I, I don't mind that. Let me know if you can think of a better idea. Let me know if you think it's just a bit stupid. But that allows them to have you know, the small skirmish units, similar to Jaegers. That would let them pick off the uh, the British soldiers. They should have sharpshooter as well. I haven't put that in, but uh, but there you go. Something that you could also add to them, particularly the Buccaneers, are light guns. They could have dismounted the guns from their ships and brought them inland as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the artillery in a second. And one thing that I, I should say that I haven't added, and I meant to talk about it when we were talking about line infantry and I forgot, 
is I haven't added U.S. Marines. Now, the U.S. Marines were around at this point. In fact, it was only very shortly after the War of 1812 that the U.S. Marines had their famous march across the Mediterranean coast of North Africa and seized Tripoli. Again, that's an absolutely fascinating episode. I'd love to talk more about that, but that may just slightly be beyond our period. But I would say with those guys, U.S. Marines have them as same as line infantry. Just give them elite five plus maybe. And I think you could probably go with that. You could potentially give them Tough Fighter, because you know me, I give everyone Tough Fighter. But uh, I think uh, Elite 5 Plus would probably be good enough. Failing that, you could also maybe give them Morale 3 Plus to represent the Esprit de Corps that the Marines have. I'm not sure they had it then. It might be, again, you know, it's a little bit one of those cheesy things, but it just differentiates them from the line infantry. So anyway, so back onto the page we were talking about the Buccaneers and the Mountain Men. The final part of that are the US Light Dragoons or the US Dragoons. Now there were two regiments of each and they were based on the British Army's Dragoons. So very similar to the British, the Dragoons and Light Dragoons did pretty much the same thing. With the French, you've got your Light Dragoons in the, the Chasseur à Cheval sort of. And you've got the Dragoons who were your classic heavy cavalry. Not so much in the British Army and definitely not so much in the American Army. These guys are just, just Dragoons. They're not bad. They've got the, the general Dragoon stats. So they can do Dragoony stuff. That said, they don't have Ferocious Charge and the British absolutely do. So you may not necessarily want to rush in uh, like the 7th Cavalry as it were and mix it up with the British Cavalry. You might you may well come off worse there now one thing that they did do uh, very similar to the austrians is they had huge regiments they had eight squadrons in a regiment and they often broke them down in fact the regiment did not fight as a whole regiment for the entire war so you could say well the the regiment here represents maybe four squadrons i've also given you the option to have a small unit and that represents just a two squadron uh, unit of the uh, the u.s dragoons so finally, we get on to the last page, and this is my <laughs> this is <laughs> this is my favourite page. Uh, is it more favourite than the Eagle one? Yeah, I think it is more favourite than the Eagle one. And this is where we talk about the U.S. artillery. Now, the U.S. artillery was actually very, very good. It's quite strange where a lot of the armies that were not very good at the time, and don't get me wrong, the Americans were good, but some of the armies that weren't so good, for instance, the Spanish, they had excellent artillery. And I think that's down to the the fact that you need to have well trained officers to be artillery officers you can't just half arse it like you can with the infantry for argument's sake the officers of artillery need to be very good i mean you know the most famous artillery officer of all time napoleon he did pretty well didn't he so <laughs> so yes the u.s artillery was particularly good you could give them the um the rule to the death uh, de la muerte that the spanish have in albion triumphant volume one i don't think that necessarily be out of place for the americans but i've given them three different types of artillery they've got foot artillery horse artillery obviously and they've also got positional artillery that are heavy siege guns as well so they've got plenty of artillery there again it wasn't actually used that much we'll get more into that when we get on to the army lists themselves that'll have to be in a future video though but uh so that's the artillery you can see on the left You've got the artillery at, um, blah, 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 blah. I can't remember where that, the, that painting's from, actually. It's where Madison was injured. And to the right of it, of course, you've got, <laughs> you've got the uh, results of the War of 1812. You've got the White House being burnt down. So I had to get that in. Even though it's July the 4th, I had to get that little nut punch in for you right at the end there. So that's it. So those are my ideas for the us army of 1812 those of you who've been following my live streams will know that i have been working on a battalion of infantry they are now finished that battalion is sat in front of me right now i may put some pictures up on facebook of it if i get time the light is going here so i may not be able to do it today but maybe in the future I haven't quite finished the command group yet they're still to do i'm about half of the way through doing the command group so i may may wait till i finish them before i actually get the, the photos up because again you know me guys if a battalion has two flags oh mwah, chef's kiss i absolutely love those battalions so there you go those are my ideas on the u.s army if i've missed a troop type which is highly po highly possible 
then let me know. If you disagree with me on something, please let me know as well. Now, these files, I'm going to try and work out how to get them on my Facebook page. I know I can upload them as a, fi as a file, but the way I've had to make them and get them uploaded onto the video is I've had to do them all as separate documents. So I'm, I'm just going to have to try and find a way of stitching them all together. But... Um, That'll be on the Facebook group. If you're not on the Facebook group, then please sign up to it. And I, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I've stopped using it as much as I as I used to. I'll, I desperately need to get back into using it far more than I did before. To be honest, I don't really use Facebook as much as I used to. I still use it to uh, to ship post. But yeah, anyway, so <laughs> that's 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 another that's another topic altogether. So um, yeah, please join me on the Facebook group. Like I said, I'm going to put this file up on there. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. This genuinely is a two-way thing. I want to do more of these. I've, I've already got one for our October special in the works. And I also want to do what uh, videos on what I would like to see from an Austerlitz book and a Thunder on the Danube book. So please let me know what you think of this format, if you enjoy it or not. If you don't, then I won't do it again. If you did like it, then we'll we'll push on with the other ones. Please let me know what you think of the ideas. If you've got any of your own, then please let me know. And also, also, the other thing with the Facebook page, quick before I go, I know I'm burbling now. Please send me your pictures of your models and your armies if you want to see them on the channel. I'm kind of reaching the end of my figures at the moment, and I'm, I'm kind of steal, stealing pictures off the internet. I don't really like it. I've already had a couple of people send me images of their armies and link me to their blogs where I can get the pictures off there. So that's all fantastic. You can send them to me on the Facebook page. If I do not, if you send me a, a message on Facebook and I don't get back to you, it's not that I'm being ignorant. Well, it is that I'm being ignorant, so I apologise for that. But it's normally because it's super weird. If you switch between your personal account and the, my channel's account, it doesn't tell me that I've got notifications for the other one. So I do, I, I do apologise. I do, I do try and check it every now and again. But if I've not got back to you, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I probably haven't seen your message, if I'm honest. But... Thank you very much for listening. Oh, oh, I also should say as well, I, I, this is this is a never-ending conclusion to the, uh, the, <laughs> the episode, this one. Uh, I've been also getting quite a few new members joining the channel as well. There's a little join button next to subscribe there. Thank you so, so much. That money is actually going towards buying my US Army. So thank you for that. If you want to see more US-related content on the channel, then uh, the join button's right there. And it also helps uh, just, you know, find get me the paints and brushes and things like that that i need to be going i will have a how to buy and a maxing your minis episode on the british coming up short oh, sorry on the americans coming up shortly but i want to say thank you very very much for listening this has been like the return of the king we've had like a thousand different endings but this is the actual final one thank you for putting up with me happy independence day you ungrateful colonists and i'll see you guys in the next one